Claymore back here, guys, with another awesome take. As you know, today is NFL, the start, the official start of the season, or the, well, this is the first day that all the games are being played, as opposed to Thursday night. Now, really quick, I want to talk about something really quick about what could happen today as far as protests are concerned. The NFL has already basically told you that they're going to, you know, honor victims of systemic racism is what they're saying by putting some of the names in their helmets. Now, my team, the Packers, they have already announced that uh, they're going to be putting Willie, De uh, Willie Brown's um, name on the back of the, uh, his number on the back of their helmets. That's okay, in my opinion, because they're honoring a player that died earlier this year. However, they're playing in Minnesota, and the George Floyd's family has is going to be in attendance. So I would expect probably some sort of SJWBS there. Now, Baker Mayfield, on the other hand, he has backtracked and said he's going to stand. Uh, I believe there's going to be a combination of kneeling, there's going to be a combination of linked arms, and there's going to be a combination of a lot of, of, of a lot of different things. I don't expect to see an extreme mass protest across the board, but uh, as far as like kneeling is what I meant to say. But I am expecting to see a lot of social justice stuff going on today um, in other forms, other ways. I think that the NFL understands that the NBA's problem with their ratings and why they're down is a reason for this. It wouldn't surprise me if Roger Goodell has already told the owners, look, man, try to get your guys to stand, do something, because our ratings, we're seeing ratings in the tank right now for the NBA and the NBA playoffs. I did a video on that earlier today. If you guys want to go back and watch that, I highly suggest you do. But here's the problem that I see with the NFL going forward. The other night, the Chiefs-Texans game, there was a 16% drop in the ratings from last year's game. Now, last year's game between Green Bay and Chicago was not that good of a game. It was kind of a slog, kind of a defensive slugfest, and it really wasn't that good. The year before that, of course, we had the Aaron Rodgers comeback. The year before that, there you had, I think it was, a, I want to say it was New England and Kansas City. That game would have got relatively high ratings. But we also got the old 28-3 um, comeback bull crap that got shoved in our face constantly over and over again throughout the entire course of the entire game. So... Here's the thing about what I think could be going, happening going forward. The NFL is in a really bad spot. Number one, the COVID crisis, and that's a separate topic for, uh, for a later date. Uh, it's, it's actually been beat to death. Most of the country has got COVID, uh, COVID fatigue. So the problem right now is that the NFL, this is what they're facing. Right now, you're only allowing 15 to 25,000 fans in each game. So the t And we're finding out that the other night in the Chiefs game that the tickets, you couldn't buy the tickets unless you were in groups of six. Now, anybody who's ever been to an NFL football game will tell you flat out that the tickets are astronomically high. I went to the Cowboys-Packers game last year, and I think it costed me and uh, the person, my cousin, who was with, I was with, I think it cost us right around $400 uh, a piece for each ticket. And that right there was for a third-row seat. Um, Okay, the ticket prices this year, at least for the first half of the season, some of these are in the four and five digits. NFL games are not easy to get, okay? They're just not easy to get. Now, there is the advantage of going in groups and splitting the calls, but you still got to pay for individual tickets. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. The protests are going to drop the overall ratings. When the ratings go down, the ad revenue goes down too. The thing is the NFL is not, catering to the full base. They're only trying to cater to one side of the aisle, the African-American base, which is only about 13% of the population in this country. So when you get in most of your white, blue-collar, patriotic types, guys like myself, they probably aren't going to watch it this year or probably not going to watch it as much. This is a problem. And, and like I said, I've told guys, I've told everybody who's, who's planned on boycotting or whatnot, I wouldn't tell people that you're boycotting. I would just be quiet. And somebody asks you flat out, hey, look, man, what happened at the game? Or, man, did you see the game last night? I said, man, I'm not watching this year. Well, why aren't you watching it? And you just reply, well, look, dude, they've, they've really upset me with the social justice warrior movement and just move on, just walk away with it. After a while, the world will get around, the NFL will begin to see this. But this is a thing that could take two or three years for them to recover from. You see, the price of tickets being as high as they are already scares fans away. It's not the COVID crisis. Trust me. These stadiums could hold 30 to 40,000 people. They could hold half. They could even hold 75% with proper social distancing guidelines if they did it right. They don't want to do that instead, though. In a lot of ways, the NFL is kind of shooting itself in the foot with its overall revenue. So what probably happens is this here, and I'm going to give you a quick example. The other day on social media, I was, on, I was looking at um, one of my uh, Packer posts, and there's a lot of people who are putting in the comments that they're boycotting, that they're ashamed of the team. 
especially now that you had the riots in Kenosha. I think today's Minnesota Green Bay game is going to be a problem as far as social justice movement is concerned. I've already told you George Floyd's family is going to be there. Expect to see, expect to see a lot in that one. But these guys were talking, some people were responding by saying stuff like, well, you're not going, that makes it easier for me to get a ticket. Uh, no, it does not. It actually makes it harder. You see, when you've only got about sixteen to 20,000 fans allowed at the game, the price of a $200 ticket now becomes six. The price of a $600 ticket now becomes $1,400, $1,500. And like I said, you've got to find five or six people to go with you to the game, and they've got to pay too. You see, you're asking people who may not be interested in the game to go. So you're looking at a massive revenue loss. Now, going on in the future, in the future of this whole entire ordeal, um, this could be a problem for the NFL at a later date for other reasons. Number one, you got to find a way to get your fan base back. Your plan of trying to only cater to 13 to maybe 25% of the entire fan base is going to alienate the other 60 to 70%. Or There's probably going to be a good 25% in the middle but you're going to alienate more than half the overall base. There was a poll recently cited about why are you not watching the NBA playoffs? 38% said it's because the game is getting too political. An additional 19% said because the game is too connected to China. That's 57% of the audience saying, basically saying screw you to the NBA. The NFL, I can see it being right around 50% to 55%. Remember, the NFL is the big thing here, so I wouldn't expect – I wouldn't expect a 45% ratings drop, but I would expect a 16 to 25% decline after week one if the players are protesting. Now, the games are about to start here soon, about an hour or so. Um, I still had not made up my mind. I'll probably just leave the TV on while I do other things uh, in the house because this is Sunday. It's a cleanup day for me, so that's probably what I'll do. But I'm basically just warning the NFL. At some point in time, you're going to have to come back and you've got to beg your audience to come back to collect the revenue that you've lost. There's already, there's already word right now that the salary cap is going to be adjusted in a very different way next year to where they're going to have less money. Well, when you experience the ad loss from TV ratings, when you experience the loss of tickets, you experience overall loss in merchandising, you're probably going to lose a lot of money. So I got so my flash prediction for going forward is the NFL, after this season in particular, they're going to have to beg their fans back. And they're going to have to do all kinds of gestures to do this. Now, I had a piece out about how ESPN called the fans racist. I'm pretty sure that people have seen Stephen A. Smith, Ryan Clark, and Max Kellerman already call everybody who booed racist. That's just a bad take to do, okay? Let's just let's face it. You don't need to call your fans racist. You shouldn't do that. That's just wrong, okay? You've already pissed off your fans enough, and now you've just made sure that they're not going to come back. It's part of the reason why ESPN ratings are down, which I will probably do a video on later on. Now, the backlash I expect, and trust me, they're going to give a lot of fodder. The expectations that I see tomorrow, I'm pretty sure you're going to see Shannon Sharp go after us. You're going to see Skip Bayless go after us. You're going to see um, Stephen A. Smith. You're going to see Matt Scum. You're going to see this. It's going to continue to pound, 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 and pound, and pound. And they're going to try to ingrain it to the point to where nobody's going to watch. I think that these that these particular protests had the potential of killing the game completely outright. However, if the players do it right, there may be a way for the fan base to eventually forgive them. That right is what I got to say this morning before week one. Guys, once again, this is Claymore. If you like my content, guys, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share my content. I really appreciate it. And I'll be having some more pieces out going forward, probably in the mornings. But I'm right now, for the time being, I'm only going to be putting out maybe four, maybe three to five uh, pieces a week. All right. Once again, it's Claymore. Guys, if you like my content, please like, subscribe. Guys, please share it. I will talk to you guys, and I really, really appreciate all your support. Peace out.